In this learning video we're going to look at if statements. Often we want programs to make decisions based on the user input. So that is exactly what an if statement will do. It will decide to, I don't know, let's say display one of two um, statements onto the screen depending on what we type in. What we're going to do is we're going to type in, in this example, two numbers and we're going to get the program to decide which one's the biggest number. So at the moment you can see that I've asked the user to type in a first number, I've converted their input into an integer data type and stored that in number one. Done the same for a second number, converted it to an integer and stored that in a variable called number two. So if I want to get my program deciding which is the biggest number, I'm going to start my if statement like so. I'm going to say that if number one is greater than number two. Made a mistake there. Obviously number one, the name of the variable. Um, so I need to put that one next to number to make it an actual name. So I'm going to say that if number one is greater than number two, then what I want is the following statement to be printed onto the screen. So I want to display the first number you entered. is the largest. But if it's not, I'm going to write down else print the second number you entered is the largest. Let's see if the computer can catch up with that. No, it's crashed. Ah, brilliant. That looks good. Right, there we go. Correct, okay. So, we've entered two numbers, and we've said that if number one is greater than number two, display that onto the screen. Else, which means if number one isn't greater than number two, print that statement onto the screen. So if I now run this program, let's see what happens. Type in your first number, 10. Type in the second number, 12. The second number you entered is the largest, which is correct, and I can test that fully by just running it again, and this time saying that the first number is 12 and the second one is 10, and there the first number you've entered is the largest. So my program is working well, so I've got an if-else statement being fine. So let's imagine though that instead of displaying one of two options, we actually want our program to display one of three options. So it might be that we want um, our program to decide whether the number that we've entered is greater than zero, equals zero, or less than zero, as an example. So if we're only going to type in one number and compare it against whether it's greater than, smaller than, or equal to zero, I can get rid of that second input statement. So we're going to type in a number and it's going to be converted to an integer and stored in number one. And we're going to say that if number one is greater than zero, then we're going to print your number is greater than zero. And this is where we need to think about how we can actually get more than just two possible options being displayed. So what we can do here is instead of just having an if-else statement, we can have what's called a nested if statement. That means we're going to place an if-else statement inside an if-else statement. And this is what we do. We say that if number one is greater than zero, print num your number is greater than zero, else, and then we start off another if statement. Number equals zero, and then we're going to print your number equals zero. And if it's not greater than zero or equal to zero, then of course it's going to be less than zero. So we can type in your number is less than zero. So a couple of things to talk about here. Didn't really mention it before, but whenever we do an if statement, we must make sure that we end our if with a colon 
and also we end our else with a colon. Again, here we've got our if statement finished with a colon and our else statement finished with a colon. So really important we remember to do that. Secondly, we indent. So everything we want to happen if a certain condition occurs is indented. So if I wanted more than just one print statement to be displayed, I could say print your number is greater than zero, which is nice. So I could actually display two print statements if number one is greater than zero. The program knows to print both of these because they're indented, they're inside this if. And then inside this else, again, I've indented. Okay, so this if else is actually indented inside the if. So indentation is really, really important so the program knows what to do. And finally, when we've said if number one, I should say, is equal to zero, this double equals, okay, means mathematically, does it actually equal zero? Okay, so we're asking the question, if number one equals zero, then we do the following. So double equals is if mathematically it actually equals, because we've already used a single in equal sign as um, an assignment. Okay, so we're actually assigning whatever we've typed in, we're assigning it to this variable. Later. Bye bye. Right. So let's see if this program works. Let's run the program. So we're typing in a number. Let's say three. Your number is greater than zero, which is nice. Both of those dis have been displayed. Let's try again. This time let's put in a zero. Your number equals zero. That's good. And run again. If I type in a number less than zero, for example, minus two, it says the number is less than zero, which is perfect. Now, if I type in a decimal, let's see what happens. Okay, it doesn't like it. And that's because I've converted my input into an integer, a whole number. So it's expecting a whole number as an in input. And if it doesn't find a whole number, then obviously it can't convert it um, into a decimal. Now the way that, um, sorry, if, if it doesn't have a des if it has a decimal being typed in, then it can't convert it to an integer. So the way to get around that is to instead of try and convert it to an integer, we could try and convert it to a floating number. Okay, a floating number is a special name for a decimal number. So let's see if this now works. If I do external run and I try and put in my first number, so 1.3, uh, okay, it says it's greater than zero, so it's accepted that input. And of course, it will also just accept normal integers as well. So if I was to type in minus 12, okay, it says that it's less than zero. So floating data types are very useful if we're going to be dealing with any kind of number that a user can type in. So what we've looked at there is we've looked at an if statement, if we want two possible outcomes. And we've also looked at nested if statements, if we want three. Now that can be extended, okay, even further. We could have another statement nested inside this else. So we could just continue to nest if statements inside each other if we wanted to. But that gets very, very messy. So our next video will actually look at how we can tidy up multiple selections based on input. So if we type in any number from 1 to 100, we could actually have a very tidy way of saying if number 1, number equals 1, then print this, if number equals 2, print that, if number equals 3, print that, and so on and so forth.